Former President Donald Trump was shot on Saturday evening at a political rally in Pennsylvania. The attempt on his life made by a 20-year-old lone shooter perched on a roof only 130 meters away has shocked the world. Millions are baffled as to how the gunman possibly got so close and to why the open-air event wasn't better secured by the Secret Service. Known by its reputation as the world's leading protection agency, Secret Service agents have shielded current and past presidents for more than a hundred years. But one supporter in the crowd described how they say Thomas Crooks bear crawled onto a nearby building before spraying a series of bullets into the crowd. One of those bullets hit the former president, grazing his ear and ripping a hole through the skin. One man in the audience died trying to shield his daughter from the bullets and two others were seriously injured, although they are now in stable condition. It's not clear whether they died after being hit by the shooter's bullets or the security snipers who returned fire and neutralized him on site. Leaders from around the world, including Trump's competition for the 2024 White House bid, current President Biden, have offered him their well wishes. Biden gave a rare address from the Oval Office last night, only his third in less than four years, urging cool heads to prevail as political tensions in the country threaten to boil over. My fellow Americans, I want to speak to you tonight about the need for us to lower the temperature in our politics. And to remember, while we may disagree, we are not enemies. We're neighbors, we're friends, co-workers, citizens, and most importantly, we're our fellow Americans. We must stand together. Yesterday's shooting at Donald Trump's rally in Pennsylvania calls on all of us to take a step back. Take stock of where we are, how we go forward from here. Thankfully, former Trump is not seriously injured. I spoke with him last night. I'm grateful he's doing well. And Jill and I keep him and his family in our prayers. We also extend our deepest condolences to the family of the victims who was killed. Corey was a husband, a father, a volunteer firefighter, a hero, sheltering his family from those bullets. We should all hold his family and all those injured in our prayers. Earlier today, I spoke about an ongoing investigation. We do not know the motive of the shooter yet. We don't know his opinions or affiliations. We don't know whether he had help or support or if he communicated with anyone else. Law enforcement professionals, as I speak, are investigating those questions. There is no place in America for this kind of violence, or for any violence ever, period. No exceptions. We can't allow this violence to be normalized. You know, the political record in this country has gotten very heated. It's time to cool it down. We all have a responsibility to do that. Yes, we have deeply felt strong disagreements. The stakes in this election are enormously high. On Sunday evening, Trump gave his first full interview since his brush with death. He told the New York Post, I should be dead, and said doctors dubbed it a miracle that he had survived. Turning his head at just the right moment on Saturday evening to read a poster saved his life as it caused the bullet to miss his head and cut through his ear. Today, he's expected to appear at the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, where he's set to be nominated officially as their presidential candidate later this week. It's incredible that um, a plot like this has managed to get to the stage where the, a presidential candidate, a former president, has actually been shot at. I mean, we, we shouldn't, you know, kind of be under any illusions here. America is quite a dangerous place for political violence, and there has been, no doubt, um, a whole slew of um, assassination attempts or plots that were an earlier stage for many of those 43 years since President Reagan was actually shot in 1981. I think, you know, what, what is shocking, of course, is that this time uh, the shooter managed to get uh, their shots off. Uh, the uh, former president was actually hit. Uh, and you can see by the fact that he was bleeding how close he came um, to, a, a, to a disaster. And, and frankly, the US came to an absolute political disaster because had that assassination um, actually taken place, I would not want to think where we are right now politically and uh, from a social cohesion point of view in, in America. I think the reality is that if that, that does become the defining image, it's not simply something that his supporters will uh, seize on. But I'd imagine many neutral Americans, um, having seen a presidential candidate shot at, 
having seen him bleeding uh, and been very close to death. And his first reaction is not to, you know, to cower and to run off the stage, but to, you know, kind of have the presence of mind to remind everyone watching that he is the man, as it were. That will play well. I think Americans like strong, you know, strong uh, figures as presidents who are not frightened of threats and who, you know, could well respond to other enemies in a similar way on a national level rather than simply on a personal level, saying, if you wound us, we won't, you know, kind of go down as it were, we will stand up and fight back. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the contrast between the imagery that President Biden has recently, if you like, beamed out to the American people um, and, you know, Donald Trump's sort of strongman pose here could not be greater. Uh, you know, I think even you know Biden's fans uh, clearly recognise that he, you know, he he's heading towards older age, and as such, is simply not as vigorous and as you know strong as he might have been a few years ago. And that's take the charitable view. And on the other side, there are people who clearly don't think he's fit to be president anymore. Meanwhile, you have somebody who's not that much younger. Let's remember, you know, Donald Trump is only three years younger, but who appears in contrast strong and vigorous and determined. Uh, you know, instead. And so I think that particular imagery is going to sort of have an impact on the race going further. That, you know, iconic image of him shot, but still, you know, blooded as it were, but unbowed. That is the image that when you contrast it with President Biden's first debate performance, uh, is going to leave a lot of question marks in many Americans' minds who might have been thinking of voting for President Biden, but now may shift to go Look, he's got his problems, we all know that, but at the end of the day, he's a fighter. Donald Trump's a fighter, he'll fight for America, and maybe we need to give him another chance. So um, I suspect that that contrast will become ever more glaring in the days to come. I'm sure some people will take, uh, will take any sign you know, to, to sort of draw any conclusion from it. Um, if you're a person of faith, you might very well think that uh, this is indeed a sign from God that he, he cannot be deterred, he cannot be stopped from his uh, mission. But you know, in reality, that that group of people, the very religious um, Christian element in uh, American politics, was already pretty much behind uh, Donald Trump, and, and frankly, had been prepared to, you know, acknowledge that he may have been rather imperfect vessel for what uh, uh, they might wish, but that he still was the vessel they were going to support. And I, I don't think this, you know, this will no doubt on some areas people will go, it's a sign, it's a sign from heaven, but I, I don't think actually that that group is under any illusions about who Donald Trump is, but they do know that he will be supportive of their issues. And I think that's far more important than any sort of idea that he personally might be the chosen one, uh, you know, the anointed one, because as we know, his personal behaviour uh, is rather in contrast to what they believe. So, um, you know, the phrase, the Lord works in mysterious ways, well, this may be one of them. But it's the biggest security failure when it comes to protecting peoples of significance. I mean, obviously, things like 9-11 yeah. uh, were bigger security failures. But, I mean, the, the reality of what's happened here is quite simple. Um, and the USA has had a long history of political violence. It's a known factor. Um, we've known for some time that um, you know, Donald Trump is, is a likely target for political violence. The, if you think about the political, um, the tone of political debate, and which he's obviously contributed to as well, the tone of political debate has become deeply polarized in the USA. Under such circumstances, when you have an attractive target to somebody, when you have uh, a you know, possibility this person is in the, in the poll lead, might become the next president, you would expect a lot more from the Secret Service uh, than what we saw, or what we seem to have seen uh, you know, kind of overnight in the US. And as a result, I think big questions are gonna be asked about what exactly happened here. How did a shooter get within that distance to be able to fire off clean shots towards a former president, a presidential candidate? How, you know, why would the Secret Service not on the perimeter? How have they not allowed this to uh, be totally locked down? If there was a warning, why wasn't it taken seriously? All these questions do indeed point to a classic security failure and indeed, of course, the most significant um, political security failure since the attempted assassination of Ronald Reagan in 1981.